This tutorial is to help give you some information about your pajamas, um, patterns in general, and cutting them out. Um, the first thing you want to do is wash and dry your fabric, and you'll want to iron that. Whenever we lay out fabric to cut it, you always want to have your fabric face to face. That way, if you need to make any markings, the markings will be on the wrong side of the fabric. So, washed and dried, ironed, and folded face to face. Always write your name on your pattern envelope. On the guide sheet, write your name on there, and then also write your name on your pattern. The first thing you'll have to do is determine your pattern size. So you'll look on the back of the pattern envelope, and you're going to be measuring your hips. Um, since these are pants, that's our important measurement. There's also what's called finished measurements on the back of the pattern envelope. If you're in between sizes, those finished measurements will help you determine what size you need to do. When you get the um, pattern out of the envelope, it has all the sizes on it. So once you determine your size, you need to mark all the notches. You want the notches facing out. So if it was a size small here, you'd make a mirror image of that notch sticking out. Um, each size has a different dashed line, so if it gets confusing here which line to cut on, for instance, small here goes dot dash dot dash, so you follow that line follow the small. Here is uh, three notches. Instead of doing three little notches, just make an angle out and a bar across. That's for your three notches. <clears throat> There's a double notch over here, so if it's a size small, we come out. Mark that. And then we have one more over here for size small on the inseam. These notches are really important. They help you match things up um, and, and how things sew together. It's like putting a puzzle together. Always draw them before you cut out, that way you don't forget to cut around them. Make sure the double notch and that triple notch look different from each other because that determines the front and the back of the pant. To shorten and lengthen the pant, there's a line here on the pant. I have a sample hanging up in the classroom that shows you how to mark it and I'll help you determine um, how you need to, to change it. If you need to make any changes to your pattern, do it before cutting. You can't just cut it off the bottom here because there's a definite shape. That shape is for when you do the hem, it folds back here. So you can't just cut it off the bottom. It has to be um, shortened or lengthened at this line here and adjusted there. Um, I forgot to mention one thing. After, you, after you're done cutting your pattern, take your pattern and fold it up. Get your pattern envelope near you so you can see, you know, what size it needs to be. It doesn't have to be exact. Make it nice and smooth. And then put all your pattern pieces in your pattern envelope. Don't leave them out um, crumpled up in your tray. Always fold everything up and put it back and keep your working area nice and neat. Also, when you're finished cutting, clean up all the scraps. Um, some of the pieces we're going to save, if you want to donate, we can cut them into squares for makes for people who want to make quilts with it. But put your pattern pieces away and clean up your cutting area before you start sewing. This is a one-piece pant pattern, um, It's and it also has a drawstring. So there's two pieces. You're going to be cutting through two layers of fabric. The layout for it is here. You have to fold it um, lengthwise with the salvage edges the long way. And... Um, you're cutting through two layers of fabric, so you're going to get two pant legs and two drawstrings. You want to make sure that your salvage edge, that your grain line is parallel to the, I'm sorry, yeah, the grain line or the, um, on the pant um, pattern piece is parallel to the salvage edge before you cut it. When you pin, you don't want to pin right on the very edge. You want to pin about a half an inch in, and you want to put in enough pins so that your pattern pieces will not be moving around while you cut. When you cut, you want to keep your um, shears on the table, the bent-handled shears, and take long, smooth strokes as you're cutting. After cutting out the pant, the first step is to mark the buttonhole and then apply interfacing to the wrong side of the pant 
and then um, make your buttonhole. So you'll need to get out your sheet on how to do that to help you remember. You'll place the front of the pants, that, that's the one that's got the double notches. You'll place them face up, facing each other. That's going to be the center front seam eventually for your pajama pants. I have a bag with interfacing and templates in there. And you will mark where the buttonhole goes. So there's the top of the pant and the center front. You'll mark that. Then you'll have to turn the card over, put it at the top of the pant and the center front, and you'll mark there. Then you'll get some three pieces of interfacing. Um, one is going to be for your practice buttonhole. You always do a practice buttonhole and you want to do it on your flannel, so it's recreating the same thing that you're going to be doing. Take the bumpy side, place it on the wrong side of here, use the press cloth and iron it on so you have interfacing behind where you're going to be sewing the buttonhole. So get three pieces so you can do a practice one as well. The next step after the buttonhole is step number two is stitch the inner leg seam of each pant section and it will be five eighths of an inch. You'll back stitch at the beginning and the end. So you're going to look for where you have your single notch. You'll fold it face to face. That's my clock. Uh, match up the notch. Place a pin. It should be even up here at the top and you pin perpendicular to your seam so that as you're sewing it's easier to pull that seam up, pull the pin out, sorry. Um, and then you want to go down to the end before you pin everything and make sure that we have it even down here. Remember there's a shape when you get down here to the hem so you're going to be sewing 5 eighths when you get here you make a baby pivot and keep that shape, that's for the hem later. Then you can go ahead and match up the rest of this. If it's not exactly matching up, just take your hands and move it so that you get it even. And then you continue pinning till it's all even. Don't worry about what's going on up here. This isn't going to match up. This is the crotch seam and the waistband up here. So don't worry about those if they line up exactly. What you want to line up perfectly right now is all the way down the inseam of the pant. You'll do that two times because you have a right and a left leg and after that you'll do a zigzag finish to the seam allowance. Before you start check all the settings on the machine that you have two and a half stitch length. Bring up the bobbin thread, pass them under the foot and then your 5 8 is the first line to crisscross the horizontal line. Uh, place the inseam in there, line up with 5 8 Put the needle down, do a little back stitch, and then go forward following the 5 eighths. Make sure to take the pins out as you go. You have to stop, you've got this long pant leg, so you have to stop every once in a while and readjust. So again, not looking at the needle, looking at the edge of the fabric even with the 5 eighths, readjust. So I usually just, I sew for as far as I can use my hand, then I kind of readjust in between. You can't sew the whole pant leg in one fell swoop, you have to do it in sections. I always leave the needle down when I'm readjusting, that way it holds everything even. Okay, I'm slowing down because I'm coming to the bottom of the pant where there's that little pivot I have to make. So I'm leaving the needle down. Do my little pivot here on 5 eighths still. So I want to keep that shape. And back stitch. Again, the take-up lever always ends the up position when you finish. Take that out. Clip it and then get in the habit of going back and clipping your threads as you go. Just make it a habit. I used to always hate having to clip threads, but um, they'll get tangled up and do it as you go and get in the habit of it and it won't be a hassle.